Look, we're going to need the oil and gas industry. So I'm here to really show that we need partnership. And uh, we're, we're doing some of the Baker Hughes, which is a good start, actually. But the, all we're doing is going to replace the molecule with a green molecule. So all that infrastructure in place, if we can use it, we'll use it. So we think this is not a zero-sum game for the oil and gas industry. And I refer to these huge pieces of very expensive equipment behind with, with um, Lorenzo earlier on. You've got generators, you've got gears, yeah. you've got turbines. What you're saying, I think this is fascinating, and it's something Marco Oliveira is trying yeah. to point out to me for the last few years, yeah. banging my head against it, trying to say, when you say replace the molecule, yeah. what exactly do you mean? I know what I think you mean, but why don't you tell the audience? Yeah. So we're going to produce a green molecule, hydrogen, right? And that's going to be used in lieu of uh, fossil fuels. So the intention is to, can we eliminate fossil fuels out of this planet forever? Uh, green hydrogen is going to be a way to do that. You make it with renewable energy. Uh, you produce hydrogen, you ship it as ammonia, you can turn it into methane to transport it, so there's many ways you can use it. But it's just replacing that molecule which is, comes from the fossil fuel and world. And this is the point. It's not a question of I'm going to spend a vast amount as a country or a company of infrastructure on gas infrastructure yeah. and then I'm going to have to spend a load of money on hydrogen infrastructure. It's the same equipment. It's the same equipment. I think the only difference is... that proven? Is, uh, the, yes, absolutely. I mean, it's not that difficult, actually. So I think the difference is some of the places are going to be different. Yeah. So, for example, the Middle East will be a, absolutely a, a you know, massive player in this space. But so will Namibia and Kenya and Morocco. So there will be new infrastructure built in different places to yeah. get this molecule to Europe and the United States and other places around the world. Yeah, I did laugh earlier, and the viewers will know this. You said to me, it's just chemistry. I'm like, oh, and that's where, I, that's where I flunked. So it's just chemistry. But in terms of proven chemistry at scale, we're not there yet, are we? And no, that's, that's right. why this MOU with Baker is important, because you want to develop these technologies together. Yeah. So really, I mean, our goal as FFI is to show the world we can do this at scale. No one's ever done this before. And that's the, 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 the biggest issue. There's a lot of support from governments now. There's a lot of support for the industry. There's, there's pilot projects, but no one's doing it at scale. And so, so we're sorry, with Baker Hughes, it's really, you know, our first few projects are going to be using geothermal. They're very good at that space. They know the hydrogen molecule. They know ammonia and how to handle that. So they're a good partner for us to have to get going. How far behind proven renewable technologies is green hydrogen? We have... Now we have turbines that can yeah. compete with other fuel sources as well, albeit there's energy security issues as well. Yeah. How far behind are we on hydrogen? So you've got to think about that the really green hydrogen is a battery. So you would use, if you can produce green power with wind or solar, and you can get it by cable to a market, you do that. You send the electron. But if you're trying to send it from Australia to Germany, that doesn't work. So you convert it to a molecule and you ship it. And that's what green hydrogen is. So all the technology is there. So to make the renewable energy, you use wind, solar, geothermal, hydro. You then convert it using electrolyzers. The technology's been around for a long, long time. It hasn't been done at scale, and so that's the issue. Then you convert it to ammonia. That process is in place. You ship ammonia. There's a seaborne trade in ammonia, and then you, you reconstitute at the other end. So. It sounds so simple, Mark. <laughs> and yet I look at some of the electrolyzer companies. There's one in London listed, which I, we yeah. won't mention the name of at the moment, but I looked at their share price recently, and it's plummeted. Yeah. So why has one of the pioneers in electrolyzers, I mean, you're not going to speak for that company, but why is one of the, the great new hopes, electrolyzers and, and turning uh, these projects into very cost-effective scale projects as well, why are they struggling so badly? So really the, the secret source is not necessarily the state stacks, okay, you know, there's two major issues with electrolyzers. One is can you get the cost down and it's the metals you use in the, the membrane. So a lot of technology going to that. And then it's the balance of plant around it, which is the difficult part. Mm. And so when you scale that, it just complicates the, the entire process. So look, it's just going to take a bit of time. But look, we're ready to go and we're committed to spending billions to actually do a number of projects all around the world to show that it can be done at scale. And I, I think that once this gets going, a bit like the wind turbine industry. I mean, I was at GE when we bought uh, Enron. We were all at GE once yeah, no, upon a time, Mark. Right. Yeah. We were all there once. <laughs> Particularly here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but, uh, you know, that, that, that world in the wind turbine area, we bought Enron, everyone thought, you're nuts, right? It's so yeah. expensive, it never work. And then you've got scale, then you've got innovation, the price comes down, now it's competitive. The same thing's going to happen in the green hydrogen world.